Welcome to Soapbox Psychologists. It is our mission to make work, career growth, and teaming fulfilling, fun, hurtful, and more awesome. To do that, we gotta unbox, unstick, and buck paradigms, barriers, and socialization hand-me-downs that get in the way. And we have to challenge the way the psychology of work is perpetuated. We invite you in to challenge, ignite, and excite together with us, your two soapbox psychologists, Michelle Minikin, the work pirate extraordinaire, and the most awesome devil's advocate for talent, Elizabeth Lemke. What are we going to talk about in these videos? We are going to be your agony ants, so bring us your conundrums to tackle. And we're going to be making the psychology of work accessible and meaningful as soapbox psychologists to do better. As co-captains, we take what we know as work and cultural psychologists, corporate HR, island survivalists, and salty professional females to help shape, identify, and navigate together with you better routes through these stormy seas. Thank you. Welcome to another edition of your favorite soapbox psychologist. I am Lynn Slemke, joined together with the wonderful Michelle Minikin. Woohoo! <laughs> we pointing different ways. I know, exactly. So we, we go for all directions. <laughs> so, uh, um, and uh, we're going to be lathering it up on our soapbox to a particular topic. And uh, there's this topic that um, I know I've heard you say multiple times and talk about, which I think is really important, power over versus power within. So you're ready to dive on into this bathtub of knowledge? Mm. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think we could literally just talk about this for the rest of the year. I don't I think, think there's so. any... Yeah, we, we, literally. So what's, so what's the problem with organizations? Myth. Misuse of power. Misuse of power, e exactly. And this assumption that just because you have a position or a status, it means you have power over. Mm -hmm. hmm. What would yeah. be the problem in that? <laughs> Where do we start? Oh, um, yeah, I think, I, think the, I think the problem is we the way in sort of western society is we come out we come out of the womb as children as babies and our parents try and get us to behave in a certain way mm, yeah absolutely so, what is it yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then school is the same mm -hmm. yeah and then in and then and then we go into organizations and we're mm -hmm. almost used to giving, yeah. giving away our power. Mm -hmm. And assuming that that's what's to be done because we're in a dependent um, position. We're in a position of less than we haven't had those justifications around the socialization of what gives you power of to be able, if you've been, if you have seniority, you've been here long enough, you're, you know, you're not blonde. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think yeah. also it's that recognition that if you think of some powerful people, we're mm -hmm. not mentioning any names, but let's mm -hmm. just think of some powerful people in the world. Mm -hmm. The stuff that they do and the way that they behave, I think sometimes it's almost we don't want to be that As, powerful uh, because yes. they're not the nicest humans. So mm -hmm. there's this there's some people I think raised to seek power. Mm -hmm. And other people see what that power. <laughs> it's like we go back to Spider Man, don't we? With great power comes great responsibility. You know, um, you know, Uncle and said it in one metaverse, and then May said it in another metaverse. And, you know, <laughs> it's the, the statement always holds true, but um, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think you're right. This whole aspect of what do we associate with power um, is this 
the aspect of power over and the bullying and um, and the um, someone's going to tell everyone else what to do, you know, Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. Um, <laughs> Divorced, headed, died, divorced, exactly. headed, survived. Exactly. Yes. exactly. So, uh, so poor, yes. Um, rather than saying, you know, and I think this is uh, what I loved of what you shared with me from Brene Brown, what she was talking about, about, you know, these power within the power um, with to rather than power over, it's what is your kind of mindset and understanding of what power is and what powerlessness is not um Mm. and what this and how each one of us taps into um that feeling of power is also that sense of self-agency of what can you change what can you move what can you Mm. shift so power is actually quite a beautiful theme but it is there's carries so much baggage with it yeah Yeah. because i think that his the historical you know the people in power Mm. are the you know the kings the queens the heads of state the you know the 0.001 percent who have the money and um and everybody else doesn't have that that kind of that hierarchical power Mm -hmm. yeah Um, that yeah that militaristic the militaristic, the uh, the religious, this whole thing of like, okay, there's a pyramid, and you mm-hmm. want to get to the top of the pyramid because once you have, once you're at that top of that pyramid, or whether it be social, political, whatever it is, then you have the power and you have the ability to change things. Rather than where we're, where if you look at, you know, also how did humans evolve? It's really about collaboration. Collaboration really was that key of. Um, how humans were able to get out of the swamp, so to speak, (laughs) at least. um, um, And how do we find ways to collaborate, cooperate, and to communicate? Um, We'll just stay with the seas. Um, And so this whole aspect of power over um, has been this piece of people in power only were in power if the group and the decided okay this is helpful and um and useful to us yeah, yeah. And so- I, was, see, I, was, I don't know why i'm laughing about this but the french revolution showed me that sometimes yeah. that uh, people can not yeah exactly be exactly just and, and you know and i think that this is this this piece of inherent power versus inherited power mm. or this belief just because you have some sort of aspect of or some sort of privilege that you've been born into that power should be automatically given to you or because you've reached a per- particular social station in an organization and you have a particular title you can treat others like um, crap because um, you've done your time and now you, and you've paid your dues and so now the others have to suffer yeah yeah. So this is when we're talking about, you know, um, and Brene Brown, like you shared, you know, she really dozes into it, you know, people who really try to operate out of that aspect of power over, it's all about what is the position I have over the people and making sure that I maintain that position of authority, power, et cetera, and nobody gets in the way, even though <laughs> it's not doing what's right. It's mm. about, you know, here being the one in the power and holding on to that no matter what. Yeah. And Versus. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's the cake we talk about. Mm. So mm-hmm. that there's only, there's only a certain um, amount of cake and how big your slice of the cake is, is how much power you have. And that's, I, yeah. it doesn't, it's, it, if you look at nature, Mm. um sort of the you know the collaborations in in nature how it's a part of a system and looking at who where's that where does the power come from it doesn't exist does it um well the power exists in terms of social structures yeah and the thing of you know it's like social structures exist so long as they're they're fortuitous to the group supporting those structures 
And a system, to your point, can withstand kind of a malalignment and a disparity for a time until the system's like, hey, wait a minute, this, this is Off not serving heads. us. <laughs> Off with their heads. This is not working for us. And then there's a revolution that comes in and where there's a systems change. You know, when back when I was studying um, uh, you know, East Asian civilizations, there was a series of everything comes in waves and circles because, you know, here there's going to be a revolution, there's going to be a new system change, there's going to be a new emperor, but then there's going to be another downfall, and then there's going to be a revolution, and then it all starts off again. And then we wonder after four or 5,000 years why we haven't learned much. Um, <laughs> it's like, what's that, that, that quote? The, the definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I think if you look at all, all of the figures around people and work and planet and... Like, yeah. great, like great women rulers. I love that. <laughs> it's not worked. Mm. Yeah. We've never been more stressed. We've never been more unproductive, disengaged. Um, the planet has never been more impacted by our, our stress and overutilization. So imagine a world mm-hmm. where every single child grew up with the knowledge of what they're good at, how they can take responsibility for their own actions, how they learn that, um, that, 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 yeah, personal agency, that personal Mm -hmm. responsibility, the ability to make good decisions, the ability to not believe everything you read on the internet (sighs) and, and not not have to fit in Mm. to what social media influences or whatever what you know they can question they can you know be compassionate with other people they can collaborate with other people they're not you know they're not scared to admit that they're they're wrong or they don't know or they've made a mistake that would be a nice world wouldn't it Well, and I think to your point, and it is a world that we can't imagine, because I think this is where, you know, if we look to, um, you know, this whole Carol Dweck about, you know, the power of yet the growth mindset, which was trying to be accomplished there is this whole thing about experimental learning and that growth mindset is not a destination. It's a continual journey. Yes, growth mindset, don't worry about it. Exactly. We got it. (laughs) what's next Great. Great. What's next? Great. Exactly. <laughs> but rather this piece of I, you know what's how are you growing with curiosity and what are those reinforced behaviors so when we're talking about you know this aspect of power over what are those statements what are those things that are limiting this whole belief around you know a, that's fostering a scarcity mindset rather than a flourishing is you know here what how are people being rewarded? So what grade did you get? Only an A or, a, you know, a number one, uh, only top marks are good. And we don't care about what you actually learned. Um, no, that's a problem. It's how are you, how are you looking to understand, looking at those aspects of own curiosity. So this whole thing about how are we, and then going into the aspects of how are we supporting one another around collaboration and imagining that world, it's that piece of how are we looking to the, the power with someone else, allyship. Now we're in, we're currently in June, and this is This is something as we continue to look at how are we fostering the the whole aspect of what it means to be a human at work? Mm -hmm. How do we flourish? How do we create organizations in which um, people can make mistakes and which people can experiment to learn, not experiment to fail? Um, That this whole aspect around the language that we use moves away from the from the militaristic to back to, and I'm not, I'm not being all mother earthy here. This is really serious. This is really serious about, um, you can have really beautiful organizations where people thrive. It's fun to work for. They, they have an amazing innovation culture. 
because this whole aspect of how are we having power with one another? How are we understanding the power within ourselves around our own self agency? And how are we looking to what are we trying to accomplish together? That those are the pieces in the forefront rather than the elbow Gordon Gecko belief that that's the way you need to move forward in the world. Because I think you know, here we've heard so many stories about the, the end of life. If I had only done this, that, and the other thing of appreciating life, we have one of those opportunities. Yes, it's one of the hardest times to live in terms of the scars on the world and what we're going through. At the same time, we have an amazing amount of prosperity that we can actually have these conversations. We can have this growth and we can choose different paths. So be it B corporations, be it so far psychologists, there's, there's these things around how are we thinking about this and how are we acting in accordance and doing something differently and showing that civil courage of foreign with to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Yeah. But yep. it, 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 if you search, honestly, your, search your heart. Mm-hmm this is obvious <laughs> yeah absolutely not, it is not rocket science it and, isn't you know and it's just yes yeah, it's, it's caring it's it's yeah, caring it's caring I mean, for other people you were just mentioning some values um that you did together with one of your clients and it was so perfect of you know kind of that grade school um mantra that we all learned do unto others as you wish done unto yourself yeah yeah and it's, it's yeah it's 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 that if you if you think about it and if we take a little little walk around in in some of these you know highly toxic power over leaders mm -hmm. this is the way that they were brought up so their trauma yeah and mm -hmm. their belief system and their world view that they are somehow entitled to treat other people absolutely yeah absolutely. absolutely it comes back to the well i was i had to suffer i had a terrible blah 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 and so now i get the chance and they're going to get their yours doors you know it's like kind of like hazing in college you know it's just like it yeah. it keeps perpetually getting worse and it's like how does the victim then become the oppressor mm -hmm. and it's that you can change you can change those patterns and um, here, one of our big pieces as soapbox psychologists, but also as people working together and with organizations is how do we break those patterns and make new choices? And oftentimes it's like, there's a total shock moment where people realize we don't have to do it this way. If this is no longer fit for purpose, if we're suffering under this, mm. well, okay, what are the new choices that we can make? And that's such an empowering moment is that actualization of it doesn't have to be this way. Um, and it takes a lot of work and courage and bravery where people, they're in this sense of disbelief of, yeah, but you know, they above are never gonna change. I'm like, they above, at one point, they were a minion just like us. So if, you know, if, if, you know, if they suffered and they continue forward, how can we then collectively say, okay, what could be different and what could be better fit to serve um, to really create a work environment in which we can really truly thrive. And um, at the end of the day, it brings better, much, much better results. Don't care if you're looking at fulfillment impact, engagement, if you're looking at trust, all of these different measures, if you have a thriving work environment, in which people see their, their self-agency and their ability to collaborate, because it's truly out of those aspects of power with, to, and within, you're going to see the results show for themselves. But it starts Amen. with that belief that yes, we can change it. Can. and that's what confidence is isn't it I was just saying mm -hmm. this just saying mm -hmm. this to James that confidence is a belief that something is possible and a mm. belief that it can happen I love it a belief that something is possible and a belief that something can happen and that if we were to say what's the reason for or why are we going on this soapbox I think you got it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I read a whole book about that and I was like 
literally it could have just been a sentence but yes it's a good book <laughs> love it short and succinct short and succinct I know, it's like this yes another book that could have been a diagram or a yes, quick email exactly. or a hashtag <laughs> build confidence build competence <laughs> there we go that's our book see published authors yes exactly exactly yeah. well it has been an awesome um soapbox psychologist uh, agony aunties with our with our, with our blankies yeah um <laughs> you remember sitting here in the winter in like hats and scarf and gloves and like your muffs. exactly exactly we tend to run cold yes, we do. so with that thank you so much this is Liz Lemke and Michelle uh, Minikin signing off as your soapbox psychologist. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Tüdelü.